I guarantee it. You have to plead guilty. Don't get snookered by a lawyer. Here are some common pitfalls to avoid, including one scenario at the end that many clients don't even know takes place. I know that lawyers have a bad reputation. I have a whole shelf of lawyer joke books. And some of that reputation can be deserved because there are some slimy lawyers out there who are frankly just after the almighty dollar. So here are some quick tips for you to understand how to avoid being snookered by a slick lawyer. Well, you see, if you hire me, I guarantee we're gonna have your case dismissed. The judge won't even know what hit them. Your case is gonna be dismissed. I guarantee it. Lawyers are not allowed to make guarantees to clients. We have actual ethical rules that says we're not allowed to guarantee the outcome in your case. So if any lawyer is saying, if you hire me, I guarantee X and Y is gonna happen and I'm gonna get this outcome from the judge, you should run away fast. Now lawyers could guarantee something like, I guarantee I'll return your call within one business day if you call my office with a question, or I guarantee you'll know the cost up front. Things like that, lawyers can guarantee. But if the lawyer's actually trying to guarantee the outcome in your case, that is a big red flag that you need to move on to a different lawyer. I'm so glad you wanna work with me. I got a little contract for you to sign. It's just a few pages. You can take your time and read it while I'm staring at you. Do you need an ink pen? It's actually a recommended best practice for an attorney and a client to have a written agreement together. So that way everyone is literally on the same page. But if that agreement is so many pages that you can't possibly read and much less understand it all, then it really doesn't serve any useful purpose. In my office, for example, our agreements are less than a page. So we literally are on the same page with our clients. So you and I both know exactly what's gonna take place. So if your lawyer doesn't have a written fee agreement, that may be okay. But frankly, if they give you a written fee agreement that is so many pages, you can't possibly read it and you have no idea what it's saying, you might wanna think twice about hiring that lawyer. And definitely you should at least ask for explanation about what all this says and do you really need to sign all this? You may be giving up some important rights or duties or responsibilities in all that fine print. You have questions about your bill? Well, yeah, that two minute phone call where we chatted about the weather, that's gonna cost you for 10 minutes of my time. And at my hourly rate, that's gonna cost you a hundred bucks. Lawyer billing practices get a really bad reputation. Lawyers are known for allegedly overbilling and double billing their clients, and some of that unfortunately does take place. This is one reason I think it's advantageous for consumers to deal with lawyers who work on a fixed rate. You have a problem, you talk with a lawyer who says, I will work on your problem, do my best to help you for X dollars. That way you and the lawyer know up front, here's the deal, here's the situation we're gonna work on, and here's what the fee is. So fixed freight billing can be very advantageous for consumers. There are some cases where you may need to be on an hourly rate with a lawyer, or maybe the case is more complex or it's gonna go on over quite a long period of time. And it's hard to know up front how much work's gonna be involved. And in that case, you need to make sure that you understand the lawyer's bill and you need to make sure that you work together so you're always informed. And if you have questions, ask those questions of your lawyer. The lawyer should at any time be able to explain the bill and make sure you know what you're actually paying for. I didn't realize you had called. Oh, you called four times over the past month? Oh, and you sent three emails? Well, I guess they might have went into my spam folder. In Virginia, when you become a lawyer, one of the first things you have to do is take what they call a professionalism course. And one of the biggest things they stressed with us on in the professionalism course is that bad communication with your clients is one of the biggest ways that you'll get a bar complaint filed against you. And unfortunately, it happens day in and day out where clients try to reach out to their lawyer and they don't get a call back for days or weeks or maybe even never. Communication is important. It's vital for lawyers and their clients to be able to communicate with one another. So if your lawyer's not getting back to you in a timely manner, that's definitely a time you need to speak with them and make sure they know this is a critical problem and that you're gonna move on to a different lawyer if they don't take care of you and make sure that they're communicating with you the way you need it done. Well, you see, friend, you're gonna to have to plead guilty because we can't go to trial. You just need to plead guilty and take this deal. It's the best you're gonna get. You just gotta take the deal. I don't wanna to go to trial. You don't wanna to go to trial. So you just need to plead guilty. All right, let's go line up and plead guilty like everybody else. Criminal defense lawyers have a bad reputation in some instances of forcing our clients into plea agreements. The idea is that we don't do much work ahead of time and we get to court and say, well, here's the deal from the prosecutor, do you have to take the deal? Um, and unfortunately that does happen uh, among some attorneys that I've seen. 
So if you're working with an attorney and they're forcing you into a deal, you definitely should walk away. You should, at that point, in my opinion, seek a different attorney, if at all possible. You should never be forced into taking a deal. Now, sometimes maybe the Commonwealth or the government is kind of forcing your hand, so to speak. Maybe you have option one, which is a deal which is not that great, but option two is to go to trial with the judge and you're gonna end up much worse off than taking the deal. So in that regard, your hand may be kind of forced, so to speak, because you don't have any great options. However, it's different than if your attorney is saying, you have to take this deal, I'm not gonna go to trial for you, then that's certainly an, not an appropriate way uh, to be taking a deal. If you take a deal for a criminal or traffic case, you definitely need to be doing so only voluntarily and intelligently, which means you understand what's happening and you actually agree to take the deal. Like I said, it may have two bad options and you're taking the least bad of the two bad options. However, it should not be something that your attorney is forcing you into doing. If your attorney's trying to force you into a deal and they're not willing to go to trial and you want to, then that would be a situation where you absolutely should consult with other attorneys and try to see if you can get other counsel. Of course an attorney went to court for you. Well, it wasn't me. I was busy, so I sent somebody else to go for you. Oh yeah, it was somebody from another firm across the state. Yeah, they covered the case for me because I was busy doing something else and I didn't tell you. Did you care? Did you need to know? It amazes me that so many clients don't know how the bait and switch works, especially when we're talking about traffic defense attorneys. What happens with a lot of traffic law firms is a traffic attorney signs up a client and they overbook themselves. And then when your court date's coming around, some other attorney ends up going to court for you. And in cases where you're not in court to see what attorney's representing you, you may not even ever know that the attorney you paid and you thought was going to court you may not know that they didn't go to court on your behalf. This is a practice that goes on a lot in traffic law firms, at least in Virginia, and I don't think it should ever happen unless the client knows in advance and consents to what's going on. In my firm, if you hire me, I'm your attorney, period. I don't pass cases off to other attorneys. It's something that I think you deserve. If you pay me good money to represent you, I will be in court for you. Next, you should check out my video on why you shouldn't talk to the police. I'll see you over there.